Infinite sheets of charge. Three parallel sheets of charge, large enough to be treated as infinite sheets, are perpendicular to the x-axis. Sheet A has surface charge density sigma A equals 8 nanocoulombs per meter square. Sheet B is 4 centimeters to the right of sheet A and has surface charge density sigma B equals minus 4 nanocoulombs per meter square. Sheet C is 4 centimeters to the right of sheet B, so is 8 centimeters to the right of sheet A and has surface charge density sigma C equals plus 6 nanocoulombs per meter square. And so I call this 4 centimeters 2D and 8 centimeters 4D. What are the magnitude and direction of the resultant electric field at a point that is bit midway between sheets B and C or 2 cm D from each of these two sheets? So this is what we have here. Sheet A has plus 2 sigma, sheet B has minus sigma and sheet C ha has plus 3 over 2 sigma. So this is 6 nanocoulombs, this is 4 nanocoulombs, this is 8 nanocoulombs, remember. And the distance between uh, these sheets are equal, so that's 8 centimeters from sheet A, 4 centimeters from sheet B, and 2 centimeters from the sheet B and C. In midway, we want to find the electric field. So, sigma is 4 nanocoulombs per meter square, and the electric field at point P is what we would like to find. So, this distance L is uh, basically equal to uh, 2D. So this distance is 2D, uh, this distance is 2D, and this distance is D. All right. Uh, now, we, we need to know the electric field due to an infinite sheet of charge, and there are two methods we can use. So first we will use uh, the brute force method, and we will consider the electric field due to a disk with surface charge density sigma. So for a disk that has surface charge density sigma, at a point P along its central axis, a distance x from the center, uh, we can find the electric field due to an infinitesimal charge dq. And what is dq? It is the surface charge density sigma multiplied by the area of that part. And the area of that part is going to be equal to r dr d theta. So sigma r dr d theta is the surface charge density. So remember, th if this is r, this is dr. Uh, we have r d theta for this arc length here. So r d theta multiplied with dr gives us the area of this rectangular uh, region. So that's going to be r dr d theta. Now, what is the electric field due to this part? So you can see that it's going to be radially outward like this, so it's pointing in this direction, which has an x component, y component, and z component. But if you consider uh, symmetric charges that are uh, basically, that will have electric field components, y and z components that will be opposing this. So if I consider this one, for example, this will have a y component that will be canceling this one, and likewise in the z direction. So we will see that the only electric field component we need to consider is the x component, and the x components of these electric field vectors will add up and give us a final electric field pointing in plus i hat direction. The distance between this point, uh, the infinitesimal charge, dq, and point P is d, and point P is at its distance uh, x from the center, and uh, the, the charge element is at a distance r from the center, and since this disk is perpendicular to the x-axis, uh, we see that d is the hypotenuse of this triangle, so d squared is equal to x squared plus r squared. Okay, so uh, we see that d square is equal to x square plus r square, Pythagorean theorem. And at the same time, from this uh, right triangle, we can read cosine phi to be x divided by d. So cosine phi is x divided by d. And the electric field due to this infinitesimal charge, 
dx is Coulomb's constant k dq divided by the distance squared d squared and then we have to take the x component so it's cosine phi so phi is this angle so we take the x component uh, by multiplying with cosine phi so this is going to be equal to k dq divided by d squared cosine phi is x divided by d and that's going to be equal to k x dq divided by x square plus r square to the power 3 over 2 because d is square root of x square plus r square we take its uh, third power all right and now we need to integrate this uh, dex for all such uh, charge elements uh, on the disk. So we can calculate the electric field x component ex by integrating over r going from 0 to capital R, the radius of the disk. That's what I'm calling capital R here, you can see. And uh, the angle should vary between 0 and 2 pi so that I will cover all of the disk. So this is going to be equal to uh, k sigma r dr d theta. So this is dq multiplied with x divided by x squared plus r squared to the power 3 over 2. So this gives us uh, the theta integral will give us a factor of 2 pi. Now we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 here. So for 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 that's in this k multiplied with the 2 pi from the theta integral will give us 1 over 2 epsilon 0. So we will see that this can be written as sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. Now we continue the integration integral from 0 to capital R. And we have uh, the leftover part uh, sigma R, uh, that's x R dr, x R dr. So sigma is outside now and k has been taken care of. Uh, divided by x squared plus r square to the power 3 over 2. All right. And in order to perform this integral, I'm going to call x square plus r square u square. All right. So with that, uh, 2r dr becomes 2u du. And uh, when r is equal to 0, u is equal to x. When r is equal to capital R, u is equal to x square plus capital R square to the power 1 over 2. All right, so uh, let's continue with this integration. We have, the, we can take x outside, sigma x over 2 epsilon 0 integral from r equals 0 which is u equals x to r equals capital R which means u is equal to x square plus capital R square square root. Uh, for r dr we have u du so these two cancel we can substitute here u du and for x squared plus r squared equals u squared, we have at the bottom u cube. So this u makes this cube square. And we're left with um, the integral of du over u squared. That is 1 over minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. So minus sigma x over 2 epsilon 0 
u to the power minus 1, that's the integral, and this will be evaluated between the limits of the integration x and x squared plus capital R square square root. All right. So if we perform this calculation, we find the electric field x component is sigma x divided by 2 epsilon 0. Now, instead of evaluating it at plus square root of x squared plus r squared first, because of this minus sign, I will change the order of the limits. So I will first evaluate it at x. So that gives me uh, 1 over x, 1 over x minus evaluated at square root of x squared plus r squared, 1 over x squared plus r squared square root. Okay. Now, if this is an infinite flat sheet, then we will have capital R much greater than X. That's the infinite. So I'm turning this finite disk to an infinite flat sheet by taking this radius to be infinitely large. So this is turning into an infinite flat sheet in that limit. And what happens is that in this limit for r much greater than x, uh, you can see that this part is going to be negligibly small. So this part is going to 0 and I will be left with sigma x over 2 epsilon 0 multiplied with 1 over x. So I will find that electric field will be ex is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. So that's the electric field due to an infinite flat sheet. So we have calculated it by considering a charged disk with uniform, uh, with, with surface charge density uh, sigma, which is uniform. Uh, and we, ta we have taken the limit uh, as capital R goes to infinity in order to convert this into an infinite flat sheet and we have obtained sigma over 2 epsilon 0 as the electric field. Now we can use a second method which is Gauss law. Uh, we can consider a Gaussian cylinder that goes through this infinite flat sheet. The electric field due to these positive charges will be pointing in plus i hat direction and on the other side they will be pointing in minus i hat direction. The diameter of this uh, cylinder I call 2R. So that's called a Gaussian cylinder. Now what is Gauss law? Gauss law is closed surface integral E dot dA, the total electrical flux. This must be equal to the charge enclosed divided by permittivity of free space. Now uh, what is the charge enclosed? By this cylinder, uh, you can see that uh, there's going to be an area here that I'm enclosing, which is pi r square, pi r square multiplied by sigma, the surface charge density is the charge enclosed, divided by epsilon zero. This is electric field dot product with dA. You can see that the area vector for the side of the cylinder is perpendicular to the electric field. So E dot dA is zero. E dot dA is non-zero only for these two caps, these two and uh, regions. So we have electric field times pi r square for this region and E dot dA is E times pi r square for this region. The area vector here uh, points out, this is the area vector, and here the area vector also points out. So the dot product gives me two positive answers. So I will find that this is e times 2 pi r squared, and therefore pi r squares will cancel, and I will see that the electric field outside this infinite flat sheet of charge is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 
the same answer I have found with the disk method. All right. So with that, if I consider the components of the electric field at point P, I, I, I need to write, uh, so at point P, the electric field is due to the sheet A, EA, plus the electric field due to sheet B, plus the electric field due to sheet C. Now, what is the electric field due to sheet A? It is its uh, surface charge density 2 sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 in I hat direction. What is the electric field due to B? It is its charge density minus sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 in I hat direction. And the electric field due to C is also pointing in minus i hat direction because it's on the left of this one. So here the electric field is to the right. Here the electric field is to the left. And due to this one, it's also to the left. So it's going to be minus 3 over 2, 3 over 2, sigma over 2 epsilon 0 in i hat direction. So that gives me if I uh, multiply top and bottom with 2 here, it's going to be 4 sigma over 4 epsilon 0. 4 sigma minus 2 sigma over 4 epsilon 0. zero. So it's going to be minus 2 sigma and then minus 3 sigma divided by 4 epsilon 0 in i hat direction and that gives me an answer minus sigma over 4 epsilon 0 in i hat direction so i find that the electric field at point p is uh, the surface charge density sigma b which is minus sigma over 4 epsilon 0 in i hat direction. Now, if I substitute the numbers here, the electric field at point P is, the surface charge density is 4 nanocoulombs per meter square for uh, B, you can see here. So we can substitute minus 4, 10 to minus 9, converted to coulombs, divided by uh, 4, 4 epsilon 0, or multiplied by and divided by pi, 4 pi epsilon 0, pi i hat. And this gives me minus pi, coulombs constant, 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, 9 times 10 to 9 times 4, 10 to minus 9, I hat. And I find my final answer, electric field at point P, minus 113 newtons per coulombs, or minus 113 I hat in newtons per coulombs. All right, so in this problem, we've looked at the uh, electric field due to infinite flat sheets of charge. Uh, the, the sheet A has surface charge density 2 sigma, sheet B has minus sigma, sheet C has 3 over 2 sigma, where sigma is 4 nanocoulombs per meter square. The distance between the sheets are equal, 2D, 2D, 2D. And we want to know the electric field at point P midway between B and C, at a distance D from sheet B or sheet C. So for that, we need to know the electric field due to an infinite sheet of charge. First, we considered an infinite disk. So for, for the finite disk, a surface charge element, dq, which is sigma dA, or sigma r dr d theta, dr multiplied by r d theta, that's this arc length here, 
uh, has an electric field at a distance d uh, or at a distance x from the center k d q over d squared where d squared uh, is equal to r squared plus x squared so uh, we can substitute that here uh, but also we need to consider the other electric fields uh, components so x components add up but y and z components due to symmetry here will cancel out so only the x components will add up so we will have multiplied by cosine phi which is x divided by d d is the hypotenuse of this triangle so a k x d q divided by x squared plus r squared to three halves integrated over uh, the uh, full area of the disk from 0 to capital R and angle from 0 to 2 pi we obtain this result but if we look at the limit capital R much greater than x it turns into sigma over 2 epsilon 0. Now using Gauss law the closed surface integral e dot dA is charge enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Charge enclosed is pi r squared this area multiplied by the surface charge density sigma so this has surface charge density sigma and for the closed surface integral e dot dA because the area vector here is perpendicular to the electric field this uh, the side of this uh, triangle uh, the side of the cylinder gives me no contribution but the, the two ends give me 2 ea which is uh, 2 pi r squared multiplied by electric field E. The electric field is only a function of x here, so these two electric fields are in the same in magnitude. So uh, when I cancel out the pi r squares, I reach the same result, sigma over 2 epsilon 0. So therefore, the electric field due to A at point P is 2 sigma over 2 epsilon 0 to the right. Electric field due to uh, flat sheet B here is minus sigma over 2 epsilon 0 pointing to the left. Electric field due to flat sheet C is minus 3 over 2 sigma uh, over 2 epsilon 0. Uh, it's minus because it's on the left side of this flat sheet. So when I add them up, I obtain minus sigma over 4 epsilon 0. I had, since minus sigma is the surface charge density of B, it's sigma B over 4 epsilon 0. I had, we can substitute the numbers to obtain minus 113 newtons per coulombs. It's in minus I had direction.